side over to alternate, it's really interesting to see what happens because you never, I mean, we, didn't, we haven't seen a team actually ban them out yet or try to ban them out. We've seen yeah. a Sandra ban before, but it didn't really matter. Realmler can play so many different champions, but Shen's never banned from Kurt, just like you're saying. He always seems to play it. And I know for a fact he actually has a champion lined up if it does get taken away from him. So maybe we'll see it here, but Ban's already coming in. Yeah, Shen and Lee Sin taken out. Obviously, aim that Kurt and Aaron Air. They've been playing those two whenever they can. On the other side, Malphite taken from Wicked. Jace away from Frog. And as we expected, final ban here will be a second targeted ban to the jungler Aaron Air in the form of Hecarim. That's actually that's a really smart move because Aaron is. He's pretty much the big playmaker. You've seen him on his Lee Sin getting behind people with his tricky wardrobes, kicking them back into the team. But he also gets people fed really early on. And then you take away Kerp Shen, who's just been playing phenomenally on. It really forced him to play someone else, which we might see him pick up here uh, relatively soon. But either way, we do see Wicked picking up Nunu right now. And I'm assuming that's not going to be in the top lane. But Nunu in patch 3.8 is actually in, in 3.7 was just, sorry, it was 3.8. It was just ridiculously hard to deal with. So he's like a support jungler, which is right up Snoopy's alley. But he also has the increased damage, increased health from the uh, jungle minions. And he's really fast and really uh, quick at counter jungling. Yeah, and that's something as well. Target away the least hit in the Hecarim away from uh, Aaron A. You'd expect him to go Nunu, EGR first pick, take the Nunu as well. Uh, for alternate here, we are going to be seeing a Thresh and an Elise. Now, Thresh for J. Re, very, very ridiculous. Yes. I mean, the pulls he makes, the plays he makes is the big, key, is the big point. It's just really hard to stop that. If you can't dodge one pole, that's all it takes, and you can lose the game completely. The Elise, though, I am proud to say, I actually played against RNA um, on his Smurf when he was using Elise in the jungle. Didn't work out that well for him that game, but he's actually a phenomenal Elise player. He made some amazing plays, and I'm pretty sure that will be in the jungle. I wondered what I'd said wrong when you gave me that smile there, but it's because <laughs> that Elise was come out, uh, which well, you were something happened about at level earlier. one, and it was funny because he died. I was like, yeah. That's an LCS player, but either way, he's still playing a great Elise throughout the game. So on the other side here, looking like Evil Genius is going to be going with Zach and Caitlyn. Zach, of course, Wicked's pretty much his go-to champion right now. Yeah, and I don't know if that's a plus or a downside to it. I mean, because you can look at it as you know he's going to play Zach, so you can play something that counters it, or you can take it away from him, force him somewhere he's maybe not as comfortable. His Malphite, he always plays all the time, but he doesn't look so... It doesn't look like he's enjoying it, let's just say that. It doesn't look like he's having a good time. But Zach, very strong champion. We saw Spontex actually in the last game do really well with it. Fortunately, it looks like communication was a little bit not there since he uh, wasn't able to really group up with his team, but very strong champion. Strong indeed. Let's have a look then for alternates third and fourth pick. Creatin, well, he didn't really have any problem with <laughs> insta-locking that Ezreal in there. And we've seen how good Creatin's Ezreal is, and it is a very scary champion to be going up against. Uh, definitely uh, Yellow Pete. Hey, we saw them in the uh, matchup there. We talked about both players. And he's going to have to use that range of Caitlyn and be very careful as to what happens in that lane if Ooh. he uh, goes up with Creatin. And it looks like we'll be seeing a Kha'Zix coming in here for alternate as well. Okay, so let's touch on the Ezreal just in terms of this matchup before we go to that Kha'Zix. So Creatin and Ezreal, like you said, fantastic Ezreal player. But if you look at it, if he goes blue build, which he actually typically doesn't, um, he can kite away from Zach easily. So he won't be caught, but just in general, even if he doesn't go that build, he cannot be caught that easy by, by Wicked. So he's going to have that ability to get away. Also, with a Nunu jungler, he's going to have reduced attack speed. But if you go that Triforce, Bloodthirster, Last Whisper build, which he's been doing, it doesn't matter. You can poke down. And the Kha'Zix. I've actually been seeing a lot of jungle Kha'Zix lately since the 3.8 changes, but I'm pretty sure that will be on Pharrell and Lord in the mid lane. And we see how strong he is on Assassins. Like his Lissandra, every time he initiates, the team co it just collapses on the enemy team and they pick up kills left and right. I don't think I've seen his Kha'Zix before, though. No, I think that's the beauty, though, here for alternate. They've got Elise and Kha'Zix who could be in top lane, could be in the jungle, could yeah. be in the mid lane. So leaving him a little bit guessing here for this one. Right now, Evil Genius is sitting with Orianna. So we're going to get a chance to see Froggen's Orianna. Krepo going to be going for Janna again, one that he's been really feeling lately. I kind of... Oh, we're going to see Quid. Sorry, that's like, I just want to leave it there because... No, um, Jerry is trolling. Look at his face. Uh, or we're going to see Teemo. Possible as well, but still not feeling that oh. one either. Okay, so maybe they will go R for Frontlord and Kerp will play. You know, he's just messed around. So let's talk about something else then, because they have they have played before, obviously. And last time EG ran Malphite, Nazis, Jace, Caitlyn, Janna. And they don't go Quinn. They don't go I'm Quinn. A they've, sad. they've gone for that Ari. Uh, Quinn not got the best win loss ratio right now. Uh, certainly here in 0%. Europe. In the, yeah, 0%, <laughs> not a good number to have. Uh, but it is, of course, a small sample size of just one game played yesterday. And Spontex played it for Gambit. Uh, but yeah, we are going to be seeing that Ari in the middle lane. We know how good Pharrell and Lord is. 
And it's, we often see this matchup, the Orianna versus an Ari. Yeah, so actually you pointed out something perfect earlier about the Elise and Kha'Zix, where they can go anywhere, which are currently seeing Arnia sit on Kha'Zix in the jungle. So yeah. because of that, they were allowed to counterpick Frog and, and uh, uh, an, or not Anivia, and Orianna should be able to take a Kha'Zix 1v1, but an Ari at level six, it's really hard to lock her down with their ultimate. So it should be actually a really good counter for him. And I want to know if he's actually going to stick to that Kha'Zix jungle, because that's going to be the first time here in, uh, in European LCS. Well, right now we see that Evil Genius is on your screens, looking focused, we heard. Uh, from Snoopy, I think his words were, get a bit of a kick in the ass, uh, or in the butt. I'm, I'm pretty sure he said ass. He's from Scotland, of course. Uh, we don't say butt you know, on our island. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's, that was right. We talked about this yesterday in the Evil Geniuses game. That they were in a, a pretty similar scenario to SK, where they said that they'd, they'd felt that weeks one and two just... They weren't in the right place in terms of how much preparation uh, they'd done, we, how much need, practice need, they'd had, how much you know time they had to research their opponents and what have you. So uh, we'll see. Evil Genius is, of course, one to zero this week. They took down Gambit nonetheless. Uh, but this is actually a really important win for them here because if they lose this, they would be tied then with the likes of Fnatic and SK Gaming and Ninjas in Pajamas. And that, just, six. and that just shows you how much one week an LCS can change around the, the standings, where NIP picking up two wins today, EG has the chance to do it, where Fnatic, the bottom yes. of the table, I mean, it was bad enough saying that you never would have thought EG be, been there, or would be there, but Fnatic, the winners of the spring split, could potentially be at the bottom, so... We'll see what's going to happen here in this game. So we are going to get into game there. And of course, it is going to be alternate versus evil geniuses with EG on that good old blue side. And we'll see if their uh, Lady Lucky is shining on them this week to uh, go two for zero. But Jason, at level one here, we've got the likes of Thresh in there with the hook. You've got the charms. Uh, you've got Nunu who's just generally annoying throwing <laughs> snowballs everywhere. Uh, I'm waiting for like a big smirk from you saying snowballs. But yeah, so level one. Alternate has the advantage here, I'd have to say, definitely. Because they have so much damage mixed in with the Elise, who can switch for him to do uh, good percent damage. You have Kha'Zix, if he takes the isolation damage, or goes with his Void Spike to do AoE. And you have Ari, who can do the, you know, the Orb Deception, or even the Charm if you want, not to mention the Hook. So, if anything, Alternate's going to be the one to engage, or to pretty much invade, or stop and invade, and cause a fight. But either way, Evil Genesis, like, they have a Nunu. If you're not counter jungling with Nunu, you're kind of doing something wrong. So they need to make a play happen, but Alternate, They've already prepared for this. They have that ward down, and they know that Evil Genius is, is going to potentially go for the blue. Yeah, that ward down. That'll uh, spot the Orianna ball, and as you can hear from the masses of pings that are going down right now, these guys believe they know what's going to happen. It looks like Alternate may try for something here at level one. For Elnor going to go around the corner. The hook comes in. They manage to land the on towards Frogger. Can they follow in? He flashes away, just avoiding the charm. They turn now on towards Snoopy, but not quite got the damage at this level. Bit of an explosive start, but no kills. If only Jerry got in there a little bit quicker. He's a little bit hesitant waiting for the call to go, go, go. He might have actually, or uh, Frogger might have actually loved, or landed that charm, but still good damage. He forced uh, a flash out of Frogger, so now he's very susceptible to ganks early on. The downside is, Jerry doesn't have his Ignite, and I wonder if what they chose level 1 is going to affect it. But Snoopy's he's going to come in here, he's going he's gonna to be the Satan Nunu. He is going to be going into this one, but can they actually bully them away? Oh he's gosh. taking a lot of damage. Creatine coming in, he's going to get exhausted up as a great Howling Gale will stop the chase for now. But Creatine and Ferelnord both working their way in for this one. And if a Charm lands, which now it won't because uh, Ferelnord's backed away, well, I can just forget about what I was saying because none of it happened and they go into lane. But still, look what happened. Creatine got so much damage on a yellow P and onto Crypto, and even Snoopy there, who obviously is Nunu, not gonna matter too much. But that just gives you so much uh, dominance in lane against a Caitlyn who outranges you a little bit, but with those life still quints, you should be able to heal up. It just depends on how well Creatine can really punish him right now. You're seeing Wicked actually harassing Kirp. He is level two, so he does have that little bit of an advantage. So already a very much fun start to this one. Always like it when we get the uh, aggression coming out at level one. And I imagine now we're going to settle down a little bit here as both players get things on the way. So this bottom lane going to count a lot on if Jayri can land the Hawks. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is if, if you're a Blitzkank or a Thresh. I mean, you obviously do a lot of damage, but just one hook on a Yellow Kate, one hook on a Krepo, pull him in. You should be able to lock them down. And I want to point out something about RNA. So he's not playing his typical Lee Sin jungler, but alternate, they're the fastest first blood team in European LCS right now at a time of 4.45, and usually, 99% of the time, RNA is the man to make that happen. So I wonder if that's going to affect them. I wonder if that's going to mean that the first flood won't come as early, and they might be a little bit held back because they like to play really aggressive. 
see already. Perenlo taking a lot of damage, but if there's one man who knows how to play against an Orianna, probably would be for Ellen Lord at this stage of things. Aaron here actually got really low in the jungle there, by the way, but he's, you know, he's a spider. He's got his spider links to tank things up, and he can continue on his way here and get good clear. Yeah, it looks like he's actually just going to jungle up, just try to level up right now, and not try to go for any early ganks, because he knows Evil Genesis has so many wards, so about that 5 minute mark, five to, uh, 5 to 5.30 is when the wards usually fall down. He might try to go for a gank there, so I wonder if he's going to go boots or just go straight to that Spirit Stone as KLP. Smartly enough, actually, Evil just back it away, take a double golems when it's up because they know if they just keep farming, keep out leveling uh, alternate bottom lane, they should have the damage and should be able to hold on. Yeah, this top lane, of course, Wicked versus Curve. Curve actually uh, got the level advantage on him now. Wicked was slightly higher than him. See how that one uh, all works out here in the future. Can't imagine that we'll see too much in terms of uh, kills coming out there without the likes of Aranea or Snoopy getting involved. But I like how you pointed out Kerp, how he had that level advantage early on, because usually he plays Shen, and that's where you see him every time. And the only time he's ever interacting with the other lanes and helping pick up kills is when he's Shen ulting to save someone. But now he's playing Kha'Zix, who can roam around extremely well. I wonder if he's really going to interact with mid lane or some other lanes to make some plays happen. But as you see on the minimap, Arne has already come towards the top side. It looks like he's going to push the lane in. Yeah, this is going to be uh, a push, which... Now, we actually saw Spontex having the lane fairly aggressively pushed onto him in that last game. Uh, he was obviously completely outraged as well against that Kennen of Extinct. So, not exactly the same scenario. Uh, and I think that Wicked will be able to handle this uh, pressure that's coming in underneath his turret. Not really much that RNA can do here. He's just basically throwing in what he can. Cocoon landed as well. Not really too much to write home about there, as uh, Kurt will go back. And take a look at Supi on your minimap right now. He's trying to go for invade. He's trying to counter jungle. He knows RNA was in the top lane. So I really wonder, is this RNA outsmarting Snoopy by showing himself in a lane, making Snoopy counter jungle him and not letting him gank other lanes? Or is it just maybe Snoopy taking advantage of the situation? Well, I can't read minds, but it's not often. We can't really say that it's often that we see Snoopy in the enemy jungle at this stage of a game, especially not on a wolf camp. Yeah, I mean, usually you want to take, obviously, the, the big things away, like the, the red buff and the blue buff, but anything you could take away early on, he's coming down bottom, will be spotted by a ward. And Jerry doing a good job of protecting Cretan down here. And Snoopy, actually, I don't think he knows he's staying on a ward currently, and that's wasting a lot of his time. Yeah, Cretan is just hanging there. Of course, he does have that arcade shift just to back away. Jerry that at the was... furthest point away, and he missed the hook there. I think that was on purpose because he wanted Snoopy to stick around. He's like, oh, I'm going to throw a hook and be aggressive. Like, we don't know there's a jungler there just to kind of make him stick around, which he's currently doing as well. The blah blah is going to give it away, but I think that he did it on purpose, and that was really smart of him. Oh, actually, do you see where that ward is? Actually, behind the first middle turret. I didn't even notice that till now. Snoopy put that down to spot where RNA is going. He's trying to shut RNA down in the jungle, and honestly, that is the best way to do it. Well, let's see if that can have an impact on him. They know that RNA is on this bottom side of the map, but. Do they know that he's snuck in inside of that brush? Aaron is like, well, should I just recall here from this one? Creator and Jerry themselves just stood in there. Aaron I think trying to bait that one out there, that recall, just to see if EG actually come in, try and get an auto attack or whatever off onto him. But they don't actually know he's there. And the hook's going to land here onto Crepo. He flashes away. Mid-air was the cocoon. That was literally split-second reactions from Crepo. He would have been in a lot of trouble if he'd not flashed. That might have been first spot as well, but Snoopy's coming down from middle. Looks like Alton does not know where he's currently there, but Arne is sticking around. Jerry's going to face-check this. Jerry face-checking in there as we are going to see a brilliant Howling Gale come oh, across, no. but they turn around on towards Crepo, and the first blood coming down there from Jerry, missing out with the hook, but they're going to keep chasing this one. Yellow Pete's getting hit from the minions, has to use his barrier, and Crichton actually trying Trying to get in there with the flash for the last damage as Wicked now in the top lane is in a lot of trouble for Ellen Lord up there. Wicked flashing in. He's going to be underneath the turret here, which is going to make it very hard for him to escape it. And for Ellen Lord in the end, picked up the kill. That's two in quick succession for alternate. That was so well. Oh, it's not over. It's not over. You can't talk just yet, Jason. Jerry actually tanking up the turret here. It's not going to matter. Creaton is going to get the kill. Look how low they are. Perfectly executed once again for alternate. So well done. In the Sorry, Jason. Just following. <laughs> oh my god, it's been scared. But he's not. Anyway, so <laughs> we see in the beginning of that, you saw RNA actually push up. He was obviously seen. He went and tried to land the cocoon on Crepo. He backed away and Snoopy came in. He stuck around long enough to turn that fight around and completely give him that first blood. And, and then obviously two kills bottom lane. And of course, Brownlord roaming around. That's 
That's like his trait. He did it yesterday in the Sandra. He just, he, when he hit level six, went top lane, went for the kill right away, got it. And it seems like when he has a level six mark, you have to make sure to ward against him or just call him MIA every time you don't see him on the map because he's really creating plays and it really helped Kerp out who baited Wicked in very far. He has no flash now and that means that Arne, you know, he could potentially go for a gank here. Not to mention that pink ward currently down will stop that ward. Yeah, be able to uh, get rid of that ward that Wicked has just invested into. Kerp just walks straight down there and he's like, well, see you later. A, a, a sad face, I think, is what Wicked will be pulling after uh, seeing that one Does happen. Zach have a face? He does. It, it changes very easily, actually, <laughs> uh, because it's made of goo. Right now, Alternate going in for their first dragon of the match. Nine minutes in. And Alternate, they do have the most dragons taken in European LCS so far in the summer split. Yoki's going to try to steal here. Ooh, so close, but Arnia does lock that one down. Good job at Alternate to really take advantage of that, really get it down quickly. And that gives him a decent gold lead so far. Yeah, it's actually approaching 2,000 gold here at 9 minutes in. We're seeing the blue buff being given over towards for Ellen Lord, who currently is 20 CS behind, but that's mainly because he's been roaming, because he went up to that top lane there to get involved on that kill on towards Wicked. As right now, Snoopy inside of the jungle, they're going to meet up with Kirk here. Kirk needs to be very careful as he jumps away. The snowball comes in, but the red buff has already gone. But here comes for Ellen Lord, landing the charm on towards Snoopy. Can he escape from this one? Arane are coming around the side. They land the, char uh, the uh, cocoon on towards Wicked, who will just jump away from that one. And a bit of a messy encounter, but EG coming out on top of that one, stealing away that red buff. Yeah, great job to keep that away from Arane. Not to mention, Curve, did he actually level up his jump first? Instead of, he didn't evolve his W. So obviously, with the change to 3.8, he kind of did that on purpose, but so let's see exactly how that works out. Arane is actually coming top, and they know there's no ward there. And Wicked, he might be in trouble. Oh, speaking of in trouble, Creaton down in the bottom, he is going to take an ace in the hole. And, well, not quite got the damage to kill him, but it will force him at least for now out of the lane. Is Frelon going to go all in here on towards Froggen, who used his barrier there? Managed to stay alive, and I don't think Pharrell will realize how healthy he could be after that. As Wicked now going to be the one in trouble. He gets cocooned up. He's going to bounce away to freedom, and he will survive. Great use of that ultimate right there to escape. He actually, he definitely would have been dead in the end, but they're going to push lane on him either way. Stupid looks like on the Mimics can actually or protect that and get a little bit of CS here. And look at the Midlands, they're so low. They know if they can calm the other person perfectly, they're going to get the kill, and they both want it. They both want that blood. Well, right now there's a flash and an ignite up for Pharrell and Lord. Uh, just a flash for Frog, and that could be a bit of a difference in that one. We just saw Snoopy snowball in midair. He's gone up to oh, cover no. that top lane. And actually, he's going to put the ultimate down here, which did very little damage in the end. Got all the farm, though. Well, that's Got to be happy man from that. And also stop the push on the turret. So, I mean, in the end, it worked out. His ultimate's not really effective in ganks. I mean, obviously, it slows you down a little bit, but... That was a good use for it either way, as EJ says, looks like they want to push up this lane here, but for Elmer, there's no ward spot to come down. That was an alternate ping as well, so they might be able to get behind him here. We might see a kill happen. Yeah, there we go. True Shot Barrage comes down. REG going to be able to escape from this one. There's the hook, and it lands on towards Yellow Pete. That's a fantastic monsoon, but will it be enough? No, the charms landed onto him. And for Lord picks up another one now and goes two for zero. And Crepo, he had a word on him to put, put it down there in the tri bush, but unfortunately, it was just a little bit too late. And for Lord roaming around, it's that's his. That's what he does on his champions. He likes these assassins that really do that. It works out so well for him. And now he's going to come back to middle lane. Yeah, going to be moving in there. Needs to be a little bit careful. Does land the charm there onto Frog, but the presence of that Nunu causing him a few issues here. As we do see, oh, Aranea repels over on towards the race. Frog and using the shockwave onto him, and Aranea still manages to get the big race after all that. <laughs> you take a look at Farm really quickly. Oh. Okay, just to see if a fight's going to break up, but Farm really quickly. You do see Wicked actually has a lead top lane, which is really surprising considering he's died once there. He's been pushed out twice. Actually, he's forced to farm on a turret once. It's really surprising to see him have that big of a lead, but Pharrell Lord, as he has 94 CS to the 118 of Frog, and you know, he's down a little bit of CS, but he does obviously have those two, uh, two kills over him, and creates him out farming Yellow Pete on Caitlyn. We, we talked before in the, in, in the matchup between them. Creates him very aggressive, Yellow Pete very passive, very defensive, and right now, an Ezreal shouldn't be out farming a Caitlyn. 
receive some pressure from Pharrell and Lord on this middle turret. Obviously, his own turret took a few hits there with uh, Snoopy and Frog and getting in onto it. We've got Kerf actually coming down here off to the side as well. I think they realized they couldn't do much with that one as we are going to see Ulti coming out. The charm actually land, which canceled oh. that one out. Kerf jumps in. They get the one kill. Can they finish off Frog? And Pharrell and Lord has to be really careful here. He's pretty low as the ball lands, but he's still alive from that one. And Pharrell and Lord will walk away, and that brings alternate to five kills. That damage was insane on Kerb, as he's not level 11 just yet to get the, uh, the extra e or evolution. And Wicked, he's trying to push the lane, he's farming up. And the thing is, these are geniuses, they want to take this game as long as possible. Alternate, they have no tank really. I mean, RNA obviously kind of is as a least, but he can't absorb that much damage. The rest of them are just heavy assassins with Pharrell Lord. He's going to try to get a charm onto someone, they're going to try to cocoon him, and then Kerb's going to try to assassinate them and just reset over and over. And as long as EG can keep this up as... Is he taunting him? <laughs> um, but as long as EG keeps it up, as long as they can just stall the game out for uh, you know for about 10 more minutes, they should be fine in these fights. Yeah, already got the uh, workings of that Sunfire Cape coming in there. Has Wicked start door and shield as well, so pretty hard. You saw Kerb just trying to do damage to him under the turret and wasn't really tickling him. Uh, but, you know, on the other side, we've seen how others can go down as Kerb here. Going to be trying to jump away from Wicked. He's actually burning from the Ignite there. Off to the right, which we didn't quite see, but he did survive. Yeah, barely. Wicked getting so close. That's, that's the second time he's actually almost bursting him down completely. And also, they're trying to push middle. They're trying to get that turret, which is already very low. The first one hasn't been taken just yet, but it looks like Evil Juices will be the first one to get it. Yeah, it seems like, oh no, because Alternate have got the one in the bottom lane there. Now Creaton just going in there. A little bit aggressive. Wicked has taken down the top turret, so those outer turrets being exchanged here, but that middle turret from EG is probably not going to be lasting very long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if alternate starts to move up a little bit, because that's really good. Frelmo's actually going in. He is going in. He's landed the charm in for this one as well, but does he have the damage? There's another orb coming across. Frogan actually still alive from this. There's the shockwave coming out, and Frelmo being hit there by the minions just about survives it, and a crazy, crazy fight, and that's just a fantastic oh! battle as a true shot barrage comes across, command protect, Frogan says no problem. Good guy, Karen. that was perfect control right there to watch that going across, Dragon is back up though, and also it looks like they will be able to lock this one down, ooh, that ooh. No, we've seen, we've seen the Howling Gale steal a Baron away in North America LCS, that almost stole away Dragon. Close, but <laughs> no cigar. not quite. For, uh, Crepo there with Janna, as we are going to see a hook landing here onto Yellow Pete. He is not getting away from this one, son, as there is a lantern coming out. Kirk going to get the slowdown from the Void Spikes, and he's going to go straight in on top of him. Barrier used here by Yellow Pete, gets played back, and it's Kirk who picks it up and jumps away. 6 0 alternate. Great use of that ultimate as well. Kirk, oh. be careful. Well, that's great use of his ultimate there, just to make sure his Void Spikes would actually slow as they almost land the hook onto Froggen. And he's still being aggressive here. He has to be careful. He's 2v3 right now. Yeah, he's actually going to get flayed there. The box goes down from Jerry. They're going to try and keep chasing. A good Howling Gale comes out, though, from Crepo, and that should be enough to send alternate packing. And look what the word coverage currently is at. It's over mostly towards the bottom side of the map. They kind of just left top lane alone, which Wicked is honestly taking complete advantage of. He has almost a 50 CS lead to Kerp, but obviously he has one death, no kills, and no assists. It looks like Alter, they really want to focus on the bottom side of this map. There is that middle outer turret going down for alternate. Puts them in the lead on turrets. They are... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're up in turrets right now, and they're keeping that gold income. As long as they keep doing that, they want to win this early on. And Frown Lord, he's not even scared to be at the second inner turret to try to take it. Yeah, 4,000 gold ahead is what I was trying to get out there before I started uh, copying myself to death. As there is a shockwave onto Frown Lord. Gonna have to use that ultimate to get away from that one, but there's the problem with the R. Even if the shockwave lands, it's hard to follow up with it. It really is. You kind of have to. Oh, you missed the yeah. missed it over the wall. Oh, oh, we'll we'll ignore that. that one. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if you dig over the wall, you might have died right there. But Arne coming around. Here comes Wicked, actually somehow manages to get away from the taunt. He's going to try and jump away here as he's hooked in mid-air there. And right now, he's somehow managing to escape this one. That was pretty crazy stuff there. And Wicked, well, he does manage to escape, I even think... though he probably shouldn't in all rights. Yeah, probably not, definitely. But the, but what happened was, even though Evil Jesus didn't really win the fight, they didn't lose it. And right now, Yellow Pete is pushing bottom lane. He's able to catch up and farm. He was currently down before, but as long as he keeps farming, he's going to get so strong and really hard to deal with. Already has that Bloodthirster done right now, but we do see Lord coming down here to deal with it. And there is the turret going down, all tied up on that front, but still that 
3,000 gold difference is going to remain. Let's have a look here at the CS then. AD carries Cretan, got an advantage there. Froggen getting the better of Ferelin Lord when it comes to the creep score, but not the kills, uh, which actually leaves Ferelin Lord a good chunk of gold ahead, almost 1,000. Uh, at this point, top lane Wicked doing a fantastic job when it comes to farming. 5,200 gold to the 5,400, but his CS is at more than 50 right now. Yeah, and he's down two kills, down one assist, and he's still pretty much even in gold, if not actually almost ahead of him at this point. That is a phenomenal job by Wicked, and he's gone pretty much straight tank, so if Creatine doesn't get a Last Whisper relatively soon, he's going to be hard to deal with for him. I'm curious to see what is Ari actually going to buy. What is Frontlord going to pick up with that 2,000 gold if we can take a look at those items? Because he usually goes like DFG and likes to burst someone down. Yeah, that's exactly what he's been doing in the past. Death Firegraph's coming in. Already got the Athenes and Holy Grail in there. With the blasting one as well. So we'll see where he goes the next time that he does decide to go back home and buy. Right now, Aaron Air is camping in the brush. Hoping that Wicked steps a foot forward as they put a ward down on top of a pink ward once again. And Wicked is right for the taking right now. Here we go then. Where's the cocoon? They're actually not going to need it pretty much here. As Wicked's passive is going to get popped. It's Crepo there to try and save him. Puts the monsoon down. He's actually, is he going to get back up here? It's going to be really close, but not quite. And Crepo now will have to back away. Snoopy coming in to offer a little bit of defense, but They've lost that one man again. That was that was a really good attempt by Krepa right there to really hold that down. But in the meantime, also, they're three men pushing middle, and it looks like Kerb's coming down as well. Blue buff is available, so they could potentially steal this away, but Kirby might get caught. Yeah, they may be able oh, to actually get in there. Krepo taking a lot of damage from Kerb, as there is for Elanon. Couldn't quite land the charm on towards Yellow Pete. Are they going to go up into the jungle and try and deal with uh, Krepo and Snoopy? No, in the end, they say, let's try and take this turret down. Already down very, very low, but didn't want to be tanking it up for too long. The thing is, EG, they haven't gotten one kill yet. Oh, is that going to go to Arne? He's going to try to steal it. He does have, sp not have Smite, but he takes it anyways, and now Frog is going to chase him down with no mana. Well, I think RNA could have the better of this one. He's two levels behind. He has to escape now that Snoopy's coming in. There's a lantern from J. Ree, and he pulls him to safety. That is really scary to see that many, that two flying bugs come at you right there with the Thresh Lantern, not to mention. Um, Kazans can jump as well, but Kreatin, he's being very aggressive here, trying to go in on Yellow Pete. He's forced to back away. And just, I mean, to be honest, being down two dragons, being down seven kills, they're not that far behind. Like, they're still keeping up very well, and you really can't count them out at all. It might come down to this next dragon if, you know, Evil Jesus wants to go for it, which, honestly, it, it, it's typically not their style to really kind of contest a dragon at this point. Yeah, if they feel that they can't get it safely, then it's probably not worth it in the end. Uh, but as you said, it's, it's been another chaotic start to a game, which is, you now think back to Alternate versus Fnatic. It's, it's the kind <laughs> of scenario that they really flourish in. It kills left, right, and center all over the map with people in different lanes need to be expecting them to be popping out of the bushes and in your own jungle. So that's really where Alternate are thriving here once again with a bit of chaos on the map. Exactly. Chaos is the perfect word. Jo uh, Ozone Giants were the last ones to do that in the spring split, and they're doing it perfectly. And we saw it yesterday, SK, they stopped that. Like, they pretty much matched the aggression. They were the one forcing the plays. They were the one forcing Alter to react to what they were doing. And Evil Jesus, they just don't have a comp for that to happen. And they're trying to set up for a kill on uh, Krepo, it looks like. Well, that's probably going to be down to whether J. Ree can land that death sentence onto someone. There is the dragon. Looking like Alternate are going to be taking that one here once again. At least it's been started off by RNA. Alternate are kind of holding here, just body blocking basically the ramp and saying, if you come through, we've got to fight. And that's how it's going to go. In the meantime, RNA has finished off that dragon and that will increase the goal. And the thing was, Alternate only needed two people. Did you get the pull to Krepo? Oh, what a pull it was as well. It's completely in the different direction. Catches a lot of people off with that one. And for Elmwood, not quite landing the charm into Snoopy. That could have been two. Yes, right now he goes in there with the charm. There's a shockwave coming down to EG1 to fight this one. It looks like they're going to try and turn this one around again. The charm not quite connecting. But they've done the one for oh, zero. And the once again, very close, but not landing. I'm not sure if it's just over. And as I said, they back away. But also, I mean, they can keep pushing. And I was trying to say, they only sent two members at Dragon, and the rest of Alternate was defending middle lane, because that's usually how you counter when a team goes for Dragon. You just push their middle turret. But with this turret very low, it looks like they should really take it. It's just that they're going to have to back away. Yeah, EG backing out completely from that one. I feel like they're strong enough to put up a solid defense that wouldn't have cost them with uh, three or four deaths, maybe, uh, by the end of that one. Krepo just getting himself back into play as well. So things should at least make 
slow down a little now for us to talk somewhat about the items because we have the Rabadon death cap already finished here for uh, for Ellen Lord's Ari, along with that themes which I talked about earlier. On the other side, similar scenario, but Frogan going in for those boots first, even upgraded them to home guards, um, and got the need to large rod. You have to give him credit, the damage Frogan is doing is really substantial, even though he doesn't have that many items. I mean, he's down that death cap against his counterpart, but he still did a lot of damage to Frogan and Creatine, because they don't have any really defensive items, except what RNA is bringing with that Runic Bulwark. So, that is, it's definitely a close race right there, but the the 80 carries for me is where it's really at right now. You have a Bloodthirster and an Ivers Blade on Yula Pete, which when do you ever see Ivers Blade anymore really um, picked up? So he's going to go for that Static Shift as Frontlord fails a ward there, but we'll, we'll ignore that one as well. But um, he's going for that Static Shift so he has some extra wave clear because they realize they're going to be playing defensive. They have to go to hold him up on turrets. And with the Static Shift, with the ball from Orianna, and not to mention the Piltor Peacemaker and the Howling Gale from Krepo, you should be able to hold on to turrets really well. That's if ultimate decide to actually siege, but not just dive straight <laughs> on top of your head. Uh, that may possibly happen at some point as well. Right now, it's EG who are actually pushing on towards the turrets. It's middle outer turret right now. It only has Jerry there for defense. Snoopy and... Um, who was it? It was Wicked. Snoopy and Wicked, sorry, uh, who were up there trying to hold on to that one as we see the hook missing, but the charm actually will miss as well, and Wicked going in here on towards Frelanlord, gonna use Let's Bounce, but Frelanlord not taking too much damage from that as Creatine coming in from the side, Aranea there as well, but they can't quite get in and hold anyone from EG down long enough. Evil Geniuses, they're, they're really trying to scrape for anything they possibly can. I mean, they're trying to hold on to their own jungle, but they don't have that great of ward coverage down just yet. Also, they've been warding up as much as possible. You saw Frontlord, he came in from bottom side of the map, wasn't even spotted until he got there. And that's how much coverage they yeah. have. The top turret now, the top inner turret, actually might be Siege. Well, I think you're right, though. I think it's not going to be Siege. They're just going to fight on it if they want, if uh, Evil Geniuses does put up any sort of resistance here. And this can be a big point in the game where if Evil Geniuses do get dove on and they lose a the fight here, that could be the game. Top in, I'm sorry, already taking a good few hits down to just above half of its health remaining. Blue of the spawn, that's going to be a freebie here for alternate as well. What you'd expect for Ellen Lord will have the pleasure of taking. Well, indeed. And that's again the timing from alternate. They've had that now the last two times away. Aaron A, of course, did manage to steal it last time. And right now they're moving in with a lot of people with a good wave of minions. They're going to take this turret. Nice, good job. They're currently up five. Two in turrets now, not to mention like quite a bit of gold as well. And I, I, I'm stuck looking at Kerb right now on the lower right, right hand side of your screen and you look at him using the trackball mouse with his thumb. It's very mesmerizing, Joe, if you, if you take a look at it for a second. But looks like Alternate will be backing away here. And Evo Jesus, they don't know they're backing away as Arne is actually showing his force right there, but they have to back away as well. Yeah, actually, if you do watch his thumb there in the bottom right, it is kind of strange yeah. to see that because it's not something you see every day, that's for sure. Outer turret in the mid lane has finally been finished off by Evil Geniuses. That will bring them back somewhat, but there's still a couple of turrets down. No inner on the top lane, no inner in that mid lane. The bottom lane will surely be the next target here for all tonight. I don't know if Evil Jesus might be able to get caught here. Jerry, he has an Oracle. Actually, it looks like EG might engage here. EG going to be going in for this one. Will they be able to land that shockwave? Snoopy actually getting charmed up and takes a lot of damage from that. And there's a hook on towards Wicked as well. A Howling Gale will knock Jerry into the air. Wicked in the end has to flash away. Kerb going very deep from this one. Pops his ultimate and still can't quite land those voids quite over. He's going to continue chasing with Creatine from this one. EG completely moving back. There's a true shot barrage to pick up the kill fail jump from Kirk just to say as Ferenlo goes in as well they landed the charm there on oh! towards Frogan and the hook onto Yellow Pete can he escape from this one he's already down to less than half gets hit with a cocoon and it's a double kill coming down for Kazix and that was just a whitewash for Alton to destroy them and you saw Frogan he tried to steal away the blue up actually away from RNA because he took the ball off of Wicked and went for it but I wonder, maybe if he held on to it, maybe if he kept on Wicked, they could have actually went for the Let's Bounce uh, Oriana combo right there and really taken someone out. But in the meantime, Alternate, they're going to go for Baron. They honestly should go take it pretty easily. If Snoopy's coming around, and it's just dropping too fast. Nah, he's not going to get there in time for that one, I'm pretty sure. That's going to be way gone before Snoopy can get anywhere near. And that is, I mean, Alternate now, 11 for 0, not a single kill for Evil Geniuses. Don't think that even Alternate in their, uh, in their biggest of plans would have thought that 
EG will have zero kills almost half an hour into this game. And we'll see now with that extra power that the Baron's given them, what they're going to come back to play with and what their next part of the plan is. Cross their fingers and hope that they can hold on to their, their inhibitor turrets, I'd have to say. But Joe, I'm actually thinking about something you said earlier about Jerry on Thresh. He is a beast on it. And if yeah. you think about all these fights so far, his hooks have been landing constantly. You saw Yellow Peak get caught with one just a few minutes ago, and they almost were able to pick up the kill onto him. And that's like their big playmaker right there. As long as he lands a hook, someone dies. Now we see another dragon going over to alternate. Their, their objective control in this game has been absolutely perfect, to be honest. It's given them a 10,000 gold lead, and we're not even at the half an hour point. They've not lost a single man in any of these fights or any of these encounters that they've come from. That will probably change by the end of the game, but right now, Alternate are looking like the, the first place team in the summer split of the LCS. They're dominating EG. Yes, they are. And the objective control you mentioned was spot on. I mean, they have most dragons taken in European summer split of LCS, but the blue buffs they've been taken away constantly away from Frog and not letting him keep that for the cooldown reduction, not to mention just the spam ability that he can do. As the hook's gonna land on Wicked, but they're not gonna engage upon that. But you're definitely right. You hit the, the nail on the head. It's Alternate is just controlling everything they possibly can. Right now, Brown Lord is pushing the mid lane. Alternate have only got two men. Two men there drew the entire EG team down to this inner turret in that bottom lane. Middle lane being pushed, as I said, by Pharrell and Lord constantly. See there in the bottom left of your screen that he's going to continue putting down as much damage to that as he can. Meanwhile, Creaton is hammering away on that inner turret in the bottom lane. But honestly, I don't think the EG can really afford to be fighting this one as they are going to go in on towards Wicked. He's going to bounce through the middle of the pack as a box goes down here from J. Ree. A flash away from J. Ree in the end as Snoopy is going to put down Absolute Zero but gets hooked for the pleasure. He won't be finished off there quite an alternate forced to back away somewhat. Yellow Pete and Froggen still full HP. That could be uh, crucial here. And that was a really close fight considering Alternate did have Baron and their up 11 kills. Evil Genesis trying to fight as much as possible as Yellow Pete's getting very brave here trying to uh, push down Creedence's health, but he does have that chain vest and it looks like Frome Lord, he's just going to go back to middle. He's going to go back to pushing that lane in and Evil Genesis, they have to give something up. They can't keep this up. They need to heal. They need to back away. And it looks like they will lose that bottom turret for it. Yeah, and one interesting thing that we saw there, Creedence stood on top of the ball from uh, from Frogan and said, come on, press R. <laughs> I dare you to see that I'm, uh, so they feel faster than me. Arcane shift was up, he would have been straight out of there, ready for that one. Um, but Frog are not falling for that cheeky bait. Uh, right now we've got, once again, for Lord going up, and another blue buff is going to be claimed here by the red side of Alternate, and that gold lead, it keeps increasing. It just seems like Evil Genesis, they're... I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, really talking bad about them, but they're kind of caught with their pants down. Like, they can't control their blue, they can't keep control of their jungle, which obviously, I mean, it's understandable considering if JV has an Oracle, it's hard to kind of push out against that. They can't really go into head-to-head -head fight against Alternate anymore, so they're pretty much just stuck in their base trying to keep the waves that are coming at them in Alternate. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they wait for the next Baron to come up and then just go for that flat-out push, because if you do take an inhibitor right now, it gives Alternate, or it gives Evil Jesus free farm. You see that they are trying to get out into their own jungle to at least get some some kind Something. of vision out there right now. Jerry's probably going to be trying to uh, clear that out once again as they come back in. But uh, we've just seen Pharrell and Lord actually picking up um, the Void Staff. Bought that flat out uh, when he came in there. Not obviously been back since they uh, went down for that Baron a little bit earlier on. So he's only getting stronger. Looks like he's going to be going haunting guys next there from uh, from what he's already got. So you know, it's just... A, a perfect play here from Alternate. I, I don't want to even talk about EG and what they've maybe done wrong because this is just subliminal play from Alternate. It is. I, that's, that's exactly what they're doing. It exactly explains how they've been playing. I mean, two and eleven. I see the engage. Wicked going in. The shockwave was on him, and that already causing problems here for for Law. But look at the damage. Wicked gonna have cell division popped here. They'll be able to finish that one off. Creator gets knocked over the wall by the monsoon out of Crepo, but they're not done here. They're gonna keep going. A flash away there from Yellow Pete will get him back to the safety of that tower. But will alternate keep going? They managed to land the hook on Frog and Jerry goes in, but couldn't quite get on to Froggen in the end. He flashed away from that one. And another crazy bit of a fight that ends 1-0 for Alternate. That was a great Howling Gale coming out Crepo. I think he stopped Jerry from going in and paired him with a flash from Froggen, but you saw how squishy Froggen was right there. If they could have gotten one more member just a little bit closer, they could have killed him. And honestly, that might have been a fight they could have won right after that. But either way, they do lose the first inhibitor turret of the game. 
And Angel Jesus, I mean, they're showing they're still putting up a fight. They're down a substantial amount of gold, though. Like, that is a lot. Yeah, a real lot of gold right now. I can't now. count that high. And I, you know, I always like to fall back on, we've seen EG in, in yeah. this position in the past, but definitely not with the same lineup here. And I don't think uh, against a team that looked so unstoppable at that point in the game, of course, referring back all the way to uh, the CLG versus Moscow 5 game at 3 Mac, but uh, alternate here, they are just looking unstoppable. As I said, looking like the team that's currently 7-2 right at the top of the summer LCS uh, here in Europe. I think we both agree that if Evo Jesus wins this game, or if they have a chance to win this game, alternate has to make a mistake. Yeah. And with the way they're playing, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. They're playing flawless right now. Seven turrets, 12 kills, like not to mention the 13,000 goalie they currently have. Baron will be up in about a minute, and this is this is the last one. Like This is going to be the Baron that ends the game, I have to say, either for, either for Evil Geniuses or for Alternate. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that Alternate, if they can bait in a fight, as long as they have the superior ward coverage, which they're going to have, I have to point out, if they can bait Evil Jesus in, and I'm curious, are EG going to let this one go away and try to win on a fight on an inhibitor or inhibitor turret, or maybe try to contest it? Because you do have a Nunu. Well, let's have a look back to that last fight, maybe for a bit of inspiration. It was almost perfect for them. Wicked, right. let's bounce straight in there. Had the ball, the Shockwave managed to lock three of them, uh, I think three of them up in that one but they couldn't pick up a kill from it. And that's not going to be getting any easier. They're going to have to drag this game out, I'd say, at least another 20 minutes uh, before they actually get into that kind of position, uh, as we do actually have a slight pause here. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely right. It's not going to get any easier um, for them after that fight because they're coming back with better items. And only time is really going to help them out if they can just keep, it, keep in the game and keep farming up. And I wonder if it's frogging with, with FPS problems again like you had yesterday. Um, as we'll find out exactly what the problem is very soon, but Evil Geniuses, I mean, you do have a Nunu. You do have the potential to steal something away. I mean, the, the consume with the smite combo, you'll have more damage to an objective than, uh, than currently Arnea will have. Well, we are going to be getting straight back into this one there. We can see that the teams are already playing, so let's drop back in and see if EG can actually do anything here to stop this alternate steam train. We'll definitely see as Baron is now live here. Now it's with their head straight forward. Evil Geniuses are nowhere near. Brother's all by himself. He has to be careful. If he gets caught, he's going to be very bad. Well, Baron already well underway. Let's see if EG can get anywhere near this one. Right now, they're definitely not too far away from things. They're going to keep doing the damage here. It's going to be getting very low as the hook is going to land in on towards Snoopy. He will put his ultimate down, but it's not going to be catching many of them in it. It's RNA that takes the brunt of the damage. Crepo going very, very low. He will be finished down. But there is Pharrell Lord now getting on towards Yellow Pete. He's completely missed the charm. And Yellow Pete doing oh. a great job to actually pick up for Ellen Lord there as well. And that will be a four for two. EG picking up their first two kills of the game, but losing four at the same time. This is going to give at least an inhibitor to alternate. It will, but we have to keep in mind, Yellow Pete picked up a double kill and got a killing speed bonus off of those. He just got a huge amount of money in his hands and he has a last whisper. I think he just built it up. I don't sure if it was built before the fight, but they will definitely lose inhibitor. I'm not sure if they're going to lose more though. Well, let's have a look at the spawn timers. Nine seconds for Crepo. Wicked, of course, is already back up. Yellow Pete not going to be in there for 20 seconds. And I think Alternate playing this a safe way here. Take down that inhibitor and then push out the other lanes. That Baron, of course, wasn't taken in that last encounter, so he's still available for the taking. Good to see how the ultimates kind of chime in here. It looks like everyone's ultimate will be up for this next fight. If it does happen yet again at Baron, but Yellow Pete picked up a BF sword, so he's going to be doing a lot more damage. Crepo picked up an Oracle, so he's going to definitely be trying to get the vision back somewhat. But while we do have, I, I'd say about this 30 second low in, uh, in action, you can take a quick look at the items that Creatin, 4 0 and 8. He did this in the first week where he just would not die. He has the Iceborne Gauntlets now, the Blade of the Room King, the Last Whisper, Spirit of the Elder Lizard, and another uh, BS Sword on top of that. So it looks like he will go for a Blood there, so I'm assuming. Actually, no, he looks like he's going to go in Infinity Edge, if I'm not mistaken. But you look at the entire lineup of Alternate, and they have items. They're just items ahead of EG. Yeah, and not just one here yeah. or there. There's probably the jungler, a couple. The yeah, yeah, the jungler really shows uh, that one as well. Also, if you look down at the supports, Shirelias and the Locket uh, already in there for JRE. Currently, Crepo's not got a whole lot to be working with. Baron is going to be started off here, though, by alternate, already down to less than half HP. Snoopy coming in from around the side. Arane is actually still being hit by the Baron here, but they are going to turn around. There's a Shockwave, which only grabs Kirk in the backside. Wicked is bouncing around through the team. Kirk actually jumping away from that one, and it's a very messy 
Jesse encounter this one. They're focusing down Wicked. First of all, who is going to have his passive up for him. That will be finished off quickly. Wow. And Yellow P gets destroyed by Pharrell and Lord, who then gets straight out of the fight thanks to that dark passage. An alternate turn back around and start Baron off again. That is the second time in a row they went straight for Kerp every time. And that's the second time he was able to jump away from it. And that is just really fortunate. We see also come out ahead 2-0 in the fight. They're going to get a Baron on top of that. But you know, Jesus, that was actually a really well played fight. They just weren't able to combo everything, you know, perfect or perfectly, as you point out that the uh, the Oriana Shockwave only hit Kurt. Yeah, not the ideal position in that for that one. See Froggen just trying to push this bottom lane out as much as he possibly can. If you look down the CS there between the two AD carries right now, it's it's a massive margin. 361 to 284. 4010 is Creaton to the 250 of Yellow P. And this is why we talked about these two players before the game actually started. The 280 carries. It was gonna be an important matchup for how uh, for the outcome of this one. And currently Creaton is miles ahead, doing a fantastic job. Yeah, look at that goal difference. Like that's one full item. That, he, that, you know, Yellow Keep could honestly really use at this point. And you see in the middle lane, there's still 3,000 gold difference almost. And in the top lane, about 4,000. Like, alternate, like you mentioned before, they're ahead in not one item, but more than one on, on a lot of players. And also, it looks like they're going to go for a killing blow. Kerb is not there, and they're going to go for the engage. Yeah, they're going in on towards J. Re here for Eleanor. Gets knocked up there by that Howling Gale. And let's bounce on him as well, but he's not even dying. He's hardly losing any health from that one. Goes in for one charge of the ultimate. Takes about a quarter of everyone's health and then walks straight out of it. Now, alternate with that Baron buff, they're going to regen it away. Home guard boots need to be picked up by Evil Genesis if they want to defend this. But Supermans are pushed down the middle wave, and we see bottom Creatin, and right now Kerb are taking that turret. Yeah, Wicked actually jumping into this one. Kerb jumping out. No problem for him, as Pharrell and Lord is going to take down that turret on the top side. The inhibitor going to be taking a lot of damage here from this one as well as Snoopy trying to get involved. That shockwave is available now. If they can actually get it in the right place here, as Aranea and Pharrell and Lord turn around, do a bit of damage to Crepo. The repel comes in. The hook will land here on towards Snoopy. Frog and he's very low. Ace in the hole comes through onto Pharrell and Lord. He's dangerously low as well. True Shot Barrage comes around, and now we have Creaton coming in. He's going to take down Ariana, and this is going to be a whitewash fight. I can't even call it a fight, to be honest. They're being destroyed here. And that will be a double kill. Three kills in total for Alternate, and they can win the game right here. Yeah, and it looks like they will, in fact, and not only be 7-2 now, it looks like they'll go up to 8-2, and two, but that fight, if you saw what happened, it was a 3-on-5 for Evil Genesis, or the, for Evil Genesis, where they just had every member, member top lane, and Alternate had their damage was nowhere near. They had Creatine bot lane, current bot lane, just pushing in, getting the inhibitor down, and Alternate, that is a very convincing win. Very convincing indeed, recording their second victory 